Star Drive 117.8 You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind Hey guys, how's it going? It's Monday, April 3rd And this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8 We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud And make sure to support us on Patreon So what is happening on this wonderful and amazing Monday? We've got current news from around the world the Sunday Message Word Study, and of course, 2G Talks with Eddie Kwan from San Francisco. All right, everyone, how are you doing? Yes, it is another wonderful Monday. How was your new and awesome April weekend? Yes, it's April 3rd, first podcast of uh, the new month, and I hope that you guys uh, have an amazing and awesome weekend. Enjoyed the Sunday service and everything and whatnot. Uh, I am so happy, and I'm just really, really excited. I, re- I, you know, I rested a lot. I'm recovering way better from my uh, sickness, I think. The only thing, I just got to start gaining my weight back because I feel a little bit weaker right now. But um, it is a wonderful and awesome April and Monday again, and we can restart another amazing week together with the Lord. Uh, This week's Sunday message, I, Jehovah, will accompany you and help you wherever you go. Great message, and I'm sure that all of you guys are going to probably talk about all the... All the amazing points from that message that we received once again. So big kudos out to all the head leaders and leaders out there who are preaching for Sunday. It is amazing and awesome just to see uh, that the leaders are out there during this most crucial and important time too. Okay, so guys, I have some some uh, good news, all right? Good news is this. Um, there is someone who answered the call to comedy. Remember I asked last week about if there's, if there's any comedians out there who want to give some jokes and, you know... Uh, just make light of the situation, what's going on, just so we can go through it. And, you know, sometimes it might be too soon, but I do think it's kind of funny. Uh, you know, like that's what comedy is. Comedy helps us to get through those difficult times, helps us to deal with certain situations. And when you can laugh about it, it actually helps you to get through it even better. Uh, and so I listened to it. And of course, I'm like, wow, like this, this person's really going in. <laughs> on the situation that we're in right now. But um, I wanted to ask you guys first, before I post this up, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it uh, a separate file, right? A comedy. Uh, a, it's going to be a, a comedy on the current situation. And, you know, remember, when it's comedy, it may not be super accurate. And when it's comedy, it's making fun of it too. So I just hope that, uh, you know, if we listen to this, that we can really, really get ourselves to, uh, you know, enjoy the moment itself, knowing that it's kind of making light of the situation is to help us to get through it. You don't have to listen to it. And, you know, comedy is there to uh, lightly offend, but not just not like really offend, but more to, you know, it's, to, it's there to relax and make us laugh. OK, and honestly, I want comedy. And um, I, I'm I'm like man, and this this comedy bit is three minutes and sixteen. It's three one six, so it's kind of cool too. But uh, uh, let's start a thread to see if we can play this comedy or not. I just want to see how many people actually want to hear this type of thing. Uh, respond with a comment thread of I want like the first person to write the 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 thread should put I want comedy. Like all caps, I want comedy. And if you really, really want it, just respond with give it to me, right? Give it to me, right? So the first person, I want comedy on the thread. And then everyone else can just write, give it to me as a response to that thread. Uh, and, if, you know, uh, just to, just make sure that you're the first person to do it because we don't want to have like three threads going on. Let's just make that one thread where it's I want comedy and give it to me. And I'll see if I'm, I'll, I'll pin that post too so that uh, it'll be the number one. If, once it comes out, it'll be the number one thing. So uh, I think it should be, I listened to it. I, I was laughing. Some parts I was like, ooh, too soon. But that's part of comedy, right? Uh, I don't know if, if you guys... Like, I know in America, stand-up comedy is very, very huge, right? <clears throat> and if you understand how, uh, you know, when you see these really amazing, funny sets on TV, you got to understand how many hours were put in before in order to get it to that point, right? Like, there's a lot of testing, a lot of going out to live clubs and trying it, trying it out on people and refining your comedy. So this is just number one. So I, you know, I hope that we all know that, you know, comedy is going to take time. 
It does. It's going to take some time. And it's going to, you know, the more and more we have people coming out, the better it is so that we can get some more like this. We'll call it the comedy minute or something like that, right? The, the Provicom. How about that? Provicom. We'll call it Provicom or something like that. But um, uh, I, I honestly, I'm just I'm happy that someone actually responded to it. And uh, right. Remember, make the thread. I want comedy, all caps. And then you can respond with give it to me if you really want uh, to hear this three minute, 16 second comedy routine that someone made over there in America. But yeah, it's uh, I enjoyed it. But um, I want to see if you guys really want to hear comedy or not either way. Right. Uh, lately over the uh, the last week, uh, there, there has been a hot topic and it's kind of one of those um, topics that I've been talking about, which is about brainwashing. Right, and I'm going over uh, sociology, psychiatry, psychology. What are the studies on uh, brainwashing, and how real is it? Is it something that's actually real, or is it something that's more of propaganda, or something that's been uh, made up for certain other reasons? Right, and and the reason why this brainwashing becomes such an important topic uh, is because it seems to be the number one defense or the number one reason uh, for the the alleged victims of the case. Right, that's like the number one reason is brainwashing. Right. So that's why for me is uh, looking into the science behind it is um, something that is important and something that we should think about also. Like, are we just believing in it because it's all over the news, right? Is that the, is that the reason we believe it or are we looking at the science behind it and the research that's done? And, um, you know, uh, there are like two or three threads from last week that do talk about brainwashing. And I think it's great that people can discuss about that too. Uh, but I do think there is uh, the definition that people are using is all different on brainwashing, right? They're not everyone's not using the same definition. Sometimes people are using the definition of more not brainwashing, more of influence. You know what I mean? Like, like commercials influence people to buy things, right? People use like brain hacks to, uh, to you know to change people's behaviors. You know what I mean? And that's something a little bit different. That's not little. That's a lot different than actual quote unquote brainwashing, right? So like there was one quote from last week that talks about um, like say self-development. And if it's for your own benefit, then, you know, then it's fine. But when it becomes for the benefit of someone else, we can easily call it brainwashing. And I think that that would not be a good definition, Right, that came from Julia, which you know, and I'm, I'm I appreciate all the comments out there, but I think that would be a, a, a wrong definition of brainwashing to the extent of what we know, because brainwashing is supposed to be something where you're able to control uh, and like wipe out and make them do what you want them to do. Right, the brainwashing process usually is the systematic breakdown of the target's identity to the point that it falls apart. And then the agent replaces it with another set of behaviors, attitudes, and beliefs that work in the target's current environment, right? So that's, you know, the, those are some of the definitions that are out there. Uh, but it's supposed to be like absolute control. And whoever has the control is controlling people to do something a certain way. And this is the reason why I bring up the studies on brainwashing. Because the actual science behind it, the point, the point from the science is, is that it doesn't exist in that extreme form. Right, because if we went by like a lesser form of just influence, then would Christians be brainwashed? Would Muslims be brainwashed? Would anyone in any religion be brainwashed? Right? Or would you even say to like society, the way we see beauty or the way we put it on TV and stuff, is that brain a type of brainwashing too? Right? Uh, or is it just more influence? Or is it actual brainwashing? Right? So that's you know to the extent of. Uh, if it's something that's going to be used in court, then wouldn't all these other companies be doing the same thing too? Just to you know, take wouldn't people take these companies to court for brainwashing them? So you know, the re like I said, the reason why it's such a big topic because people are using it as a reason for the alleged crime to have happened. That's the reason, right? And that's why we have two more trials in this month. I believe the, uh, there's one happening today, and I'll report about it tomorrow, but there's one happening today. Uh, one of the trials is today, and it's all having to do with were they brainwashed or not, right? And the big question is, is does this concept actually exist or not? Now, if it's real, then we can debate it. But the reason the studies come out is to see whether it's even possible for a brainwash to happen. And if there's no such thing as brainwashing, 
then what would be their actual defense, right? In that situation, that, like that's something that we would have to discuss again. That would be the, the the bigger discussion, right? And that's why last week I did go over two parts of the three chapter of the five chapters. Uh, on brainwashing, this is from Massimo Intervigne, who's a, a sociologist, and he does talk about where brain. We the first um, chapter we did discuss last week on Tuesday about how um, about how it first came about, right? The second one was uh, the actual CIA who came up with the propaganda to see how they actually um, try to try to actually make it work, and the studies showed that you could blank someone's mind. Like, you know, you make them a vegetable. Like we, we listened to that. I think it was last Friday. But uh, to actually, you know, put new ideas, thoughts, actions, behaviors into them, that was something that never happened, right? So once we, now we know that uh, the first propaganda of um, brainwashing came out because of communism, right? And the, the, the government could not understand how intelligent people would want to become communist or support it? How could intelligent people even want to go that direction? And we see that's the same thing happening today, right? So that's why the propaganda of brainwashing actually first began. And then see the CIA began to do their own studies on it. And in the end, we find out that the two, three major studies that were done with hundreds of people showed that brainwashing doesn't work. Right, of putting new thoughts and new behaviors into people, it doesn't actually work. Right. So uh, this third chapter I, I do want to go over today, just quickly right now, is um, how brainwashing theories are um, brainwashing theories were applied to uh, religion, and that's I think that's a, that's an important thing. So now that we see how the de-patterning worked, but the psychic driving or brainwashing them to think other things doesn't work. Um, we even know that we know it doesn't work, but how were these theories applied to religion, right? So, you know, the first, one of the big religions where they were trying to apply it to was actually Scientology, right? Uh, like, uh, there's one person without even being aware of the MK Ultra project we talked about last week was being planned, had anticipated the only possible result of violent brainwashing would be the production of zombie-like victims and this is the founder of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard. And he had a, perif um, a peripheral involvement in the Cold War discussion about brainwashing as the Church of Scientology published in 1955 and then rapidly withdrew, reportedly following a suggestion by American governmental agencies, a booklet called Brainwashing, a Synthesis of the Russian Textbook on Psychopolitics. Right, And ostensibly, it was a communist manual for brainwashing, and whether Hubbard compiled it himself or edited materials received from others, possibly one of the American intelligence agencies, is a matter of debate. Right, So <coughs> critics have alleged that by publishing the booklet, Hubbard confessed that brainwashing existed with the implication that Scientology practices it, which they claim is supported by a statement that we can brainwash faster than the Russians, 20 seconds to total amnesia against three years to slightly confused loyalty. However, critics have overlooked that Hubbard presented brainwashing as something that should not be done and does not work. Right? So that's, so you got to get that. Critics have overlooked that Hubbard presented brainwashing as something that should not be done and does not work. The brainwashing he had in mind was the one attributed to the communists where results were sought by inflicting pain and stuffing the victim with heavy drugs. Now, Hubbard called this technique pain drug hypnosis, and it was some, something different from the brainwashing new religious movements will be accused of practicing decades later, where no pain nor drugs were normally involved, right? So you're talking about the original brainwashing had to include pain, and it had to include drugs, but later in the future, um, so-called cults in the future would be brainwashing, but they wouldn't be using pain, and they wouldn't be using drugs, Right? So not only was this kind of brainwashing unethical, Hubbard said it would never work. Right? So um, you know, he said, I, this is what Hubbard said. I repeat that. Hubbard stated in one of his 1956 Games Congress lectures, it is not effective. It does not do a job. It is a hoax, a hoax of the first order of magnitude. The communist cannot brainwash anybody who is not already brainwashed. He cannot do it. He does not know how. It is one of those propaganda weapons. That's all it is. They, or the communists say, have this terrific weapon called brainwashing. 
and we're going to brainwash everybody. Well, it would be it would be awfully dangerous if they could, but do you know there's practically not a person in this room that would be permanently harmed by brainwashing except as it related to being starved and kept under conditions of duress? In other words, if you put a guy into a military stockade and fed him poorly for two or three years, he's going to be in secondhand condition, right? Well, that's just exactly the effect brainwashing had on them. It had no more effect than this, right? So <coughs> even L. Ron, L. Ron Hubbard is saying that it doesn't really have much of an effect. It doesn't even really work, right? So as mentioned above, L. Ron Hubbard was right on this point, and the infamous MK Ultra experiments had the only valuable results of confirming that brainwashing cannot change ideologies or beliefs, right? So... Uh, that is the, the section I, I am reading to you guys today as we're, we're getting into how uh, brainwashing and how this, this pseudoscience is starting to be like people are saying that it actually works, but we're seeing that it doesn't work, right? And even the people they attributed to do, using brainwashing like the Church of Scientology, they said, nope, it doesn't work. And you're going to have to inflict pain and use heavy drugs, which most cults do not use these days or for the last decades they haven't used, right? So... <clears throat> that is something that we would have to understand for Providence too is in Providence, do we have the usage of drugs? And the answer is no. And do we have the, the usage of actually inflicting pain, right? We're not talking about psychological pain. We're talking about actual physical pain, right? And even then, like, like uh, we just read before is it still doesn't work even with all those things going on. Right, so tomorrow I'll go a little bit more deeper into it. Well, tomorrow's probably in the media, so we'll do something a little bit different. But uh, that's kind of uh, some of the things that they that was that uh, they're talking about, right? And I do think it's something that um, it should be up for debate. It shouldn't be something just because the newspaper says it, right? That all of a sudden it's a real thing. But we have to look at the real studies, and so far until this point, we have seen no evidence that brainwash brainwashing. Remember, we're talking. Brainwashing is not influence. We're not talking at a small level. We're talking at the controlling level, right? And if that's the case here in Providence too, you know, my point would be if it was absolutely controlling, then we would have way more people at pre-dawn, way more people at, um, at Sunday service, way more people who are not committing the fall. But we see time and time again every year people commit the fall. It's not something that we're looking at and saying that, oh, well, they never committed. Why? Because we're all absolutely controlled, right? You know, I honestly think, you know, <laughs> there was one comment that I thought was really, you know, telling that they're like, please, if you could brainwash me to go to pre dawn I would go, right? That's, you know, because I want to go kind of like, so we do see that people are out there that want to do something, but it's just, it's hard to make themselves do it. It's, it's about making themselves, Right. And uh, the point here is not, a, you know, we're not making any points about alleged victims saying that, oh, you know, these guys are lying or nothing about this. This is only about the point of using the defense of brainwashing. And does, does brainwashing actually exist? Is it something that we're seeing from the studies that, oh, this is, this is real. This is true, right? And that's, that's a completely different debate than uh, one question that, that uh, Amanda did bring up from last week is, is like, um, they were told this, and, and my, my response to that was, well, that's different than the brainwashing uh, debate. The brainwashing debate is, are they brainwashed or not, right? So if now that we're debating the brainwashing part itself, another question that could be brought up is what they were told for what they were saying was that the right thing to say. And that's completely different, right? And that's a completely different topic. Right, because I can disagree with something and say, yeah, well, maybe I like I I I responded, I wouldn't do it that way, and I wouldn't say it that way either if I was the leader, right? So when we're looking at this, we're like, oh, okay, so then now we're getting into a completely different subject, and it's about how do we treat people, which is completely different, right? Other than you know the the big debate that we're talking about now is, which is just in itself is does is brainwashing really a defense? Because that's what they're going to be looking at in the next two trials before they make a decision, right? So we, you know, <clears throat> we do know that Sunstein's last day in detention should be April 27th. And that's why they're going to get all the trial done before that time, right? So we have two trials left and it's all based on uh, brainwashing. So that's why I, I find it quite, a, quite odd that that would be the, thing, the main thing they're basing things on. 
Honestly, I think they should get like these expert witnesses coming like Massimo also. Bring them out just to show them, like just to kind of testify about brainwashing itself. I think that should be something that's very, very important. Tomorrow's probably in the media. We're going to talk actually about the, the smoking gun, right? And, you know, I only say smoking gun because that's what was told to me, that that was the number one thing that's going to break the case that, you know, that Sunseam is, uh, that Sunseam did what he did. But now we're getting more and more evidence on that audio, right? So then a new uh, Providence has come up with a new video. I'm going to go break it down step by step on that also so you guys can see uh, what we found so far on it and what uh, what we've done with that audio, taking it to uh, expert forensics, not just in Korea, but also in America and such, and what kind of results are we getting from it also. So that's something that I do think we can uh, definitely talk about uh, in tomorrow's probably in the media. And we, we will talk about what happened during the trial too for today. Okay. Uh, last week's poll, great poll came out, guys. Uh, how has the situation changed your faith? And uh, very, very, uh, very, very surprisingly happy and shocked, but it's not, it's, it's uh, number one is my faith has remained the same at 41%. So, you know, you're almost, almost half the people have remained the same. Even more convicted was number two, which was even more shocking, which is 38%, which means people who hasn't changed or gotten better in faith is 78%. So three quarters of the people seem to either be doing the same or better than before. And then, you know, little shaken, some doubt is at 8%, which is a very small number. And then those that are confused and, you know, kind of at the worst stage would be 7%, which is the lowest. And then, of course, we have some other people that are writing about that too in the comments. But it's 79, oh, 79%, sorry, 79%. 79% <coughs> is like almost like basically 80%, 8 out of 10 are doing better, are doing really, really well, right? Either the same or doing really, really well. So that's great. Uh, this next poll is something that um, more for myself. I, I, I'm selfishly using this poll. Yes, I am. I'm going to admit that right now. Uh, my question to you is when did you start regularly listening to the Morning Star Drive? Right, so it's only been out for three years. So it's either you started twenty twenty March six. It started March sixteenth, and then uh, one. It's either twenty twenty, twenty twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. It's one of those years, and just want to see get an uh, an idea because we have grown a lot, especially because of the current situation. But just want to see where everyone lies in, it. and you know, just be honest with it too. Uh, you know, I'd rather see. Even if like 90% is 2023, I'm fine with that. I just want to see where like where people lie in this, right? Uh, some cool ch channel comments from last week. Thule, uh talking about Danny's program. Says, Danny, really enjoyed the episode today, especially about not isolating, but having fun with those around you who care about you. And I think that's a big amen that all of us should be listening to. Uh, there was also Love Is over there on... Um, YouTube said, can we have one episode where, where you speak in your brainwashed, uh, brainwashed voice, right, the whole time? And, you know, I thought about it, but I think it would be too difficult for me to continually talk like that. I think that brainwashed voice will brainwash me more, whatever that means, right? Uh, 2 O. 2 O says, uh, thank you, Daniel. It's, Daniel, it's so great that you guys... <coughs> excuse me, help those in trouble, especially the SS. I was really shocked that people attacked not just Sunstein, but the other members. And people are so crazy that they started to targeting the second gen, which really makes me heartbroken. I can't believe these happen. this happens in Korea. I thought it would only happen in the country under a kind of dictatorship. And I can only pray that, please, God, uh, that I can only pray that, please, God helps and protects those children and teenagers. I am truly thankful that there are leaders and members who stand up and take responsibility to take care of and support them, right? So thank you so much, 2O. Haruka says, so interesting that they conducted an experiment on brainwashing and rewriting one's brain is impossible. Great points to make. Society uses terminology too, too easily without knowing well, sadly. I'd like to be brainwashed to attend pre dawn service 100%. Amen. And that's a big LOL for me too. Uh, last one, uh, last comment is a longer one, but this is from The Seer. And this, per this person, I'm not sure who this actually is, but they are The Seer from One Night Werewolf. And they said, man, I really like the people here. Cute names, open-minded, some are God-centered. People of Pravi from all around the world, but learn from the same source and love God. Even with different cultures and country, really wish everyone is fine and stay blessed and not break. It's like our own kind. I always appreciate this channel. I like to listen to your perspective and of thoughts and things. There is no right or wrong. It's just the way you think and analyze and the way you are. And I respect that. Sometimes this podcast keeps me connected to what's happening in Pravi. 
And I agree on the part that the problem is on the people who look at things and comment when they see someone in a swimsuit and immediately think of something sexual. Things sometimes is not what we see. And sometimes we do things with a pure mindset and intention, but it was narrow-minded people that misunderstood and start spreading words that might not be true. The first look at things really gives us shock, especially when they put it that way, the way they describe things and what happens, but nothing new. And when, li when you listen to this podcast and think again, that's why it opens our thoughts to different perspectives. Uh, my main concern is still on our internal separation and don't know which party to trust as lack of proper trusted ver verified information. Sometimes even within our own country, uh, country management, we don't know who to trust. I guess that's where confusion comes in. Anyway, I personally really wish that I stopped losing friends and family of faith because of all this chaos. And sometimes I hope that, uh, that this is just a nightmare and it shall all pass, uh, restore and recover. The only thing I can do is to try to not give up myself and hang in there, change myself, the way I handle these, our own thoughts and actions, connect to God, be careful with words, laugh it off, continue with my life. Yeah, it is hard to love when there is no more reasons to love, but God never gave me up when I'm at my worst. Trouble with, uh, trouble with church and leadership is everywhere, Muslim, Catholic, former faith, uh, there are pastors and all those accusations, lawsuits and issues. It's everywhere. It's never ending. But that doesn't mean we give up on our faith and God. It only means humans are imperfect. God is God. Yeah, I might jump from church to church, branch to branch. I just like to visit places, but the relationship and connection to God shouldn't change too much. And I'm still waiting for him to turn things around, waiting for Sunseem to maybe come out and say something personally to clarify things to ease all our doubts. Just be a little more patient, a little more faith, continue the repentance prayer, continue focus on words, uh, on the words and teachings, cross-reference with the Bible, keep going forward. Great and awesome message by the seer. Yes, sounding like a seer too. But uh, very, very grateful for all your comments, guys. It's something that I believe a lot of us are benefiting from too. Uh, for all you guys out there who want some Pravi clothing, yeah, get your clothes and show your pride through what we wear. Uh, you're going to see that the link in the description below. And I do, need, I, I, I think I can link it to my YouTube page now, so then everyone can click directly from the YouTube page. But that's something I think that a lot of us, yeah, I think, I think it'll be a lot easier too. Shout outs, shout outs to Micah over there in Australia. You have now Narumi in Japan. Grateful for supporting us on Patreon, for believing in supporting this channel. Uh, if you want to support us too, then check out the Patreon link in the description. And if you're on SoundCloud, click the blue button on the homepage. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that you can support the Morning Star Drive at just three bucks a month. It's three US dollars, by the way. And at the moment, we I think it's it's a great platform because you know you get a hundred like if you get a hundred people all giving ten dollars a month, that's a thousand a month. You know. Uh, if you have like, it's even better if you have a thousand people giving $1 a month, which is like, th that's the same thing. So uh, I hope that uh, if you guys have it, uh, the inspiration, go ahead and support us on Patreon there. Okay. So let's get into some music from some member artists from around the world. Yes, it is an amazing Monday. And we're going to listen to first uh, Xeniac from PMA in Korea. He's our feature artist of the day. And uh, that first song is called, it's a self-titled song called Xeniac. And then we have Kiro Black and Julius from Australia with Inside My Head. And we'll end things off with Tecmo Plus from Japan. They do have some concerts coming up soon in Japan. And that song is Promises.
full of zombies and I'm fighting for survival It's just me and the voice inside my head, that's my rival It's peaceful in my city, but I think I'm going psycho An upside down world where people look down to their idols Yeah, my mind space is like a hellscape But planet Earth's a crazy place, uh So stay in my own world between reality or insanity The lines of blood And I don't know what's real Connected, but at the same time disconnected, conflicted in large crowds is when I'm most on my own. Take a peek through the window of my soul. I've kept the fire burning ever since I heard that winter was coming. The coldness of the heart, there's no use running, no escaping. Deep to the bone, it leaves a king shaking in his throne. Yeah. I don't know what's real.
Was Tecmo Plus from Japan with the song Promises. Before that, Kiro Black and Julius from Australia with Inside My Head. And of course, we have Xeniac from PMA in Korea with Xeniac. All right, so let's get into some news going on, uh, things that happened over the weekend that we missed. And as brides of this history, knowing the power of our prayers, let's really be those that go out and pray for this world and repent for the world too. So let's first start off with what's happening with the Rush, uh, with Russia and the UN Security Council. So Russia has taken the presidency of the UN Security Council despite Ukraine urging members to block the move. And um, this sounds a lot worse than it really is, but each of the council's 15 members takes up the presidency for a month on a rotating pattern. So it's a kind of a normal thing. It just sounds worse because it sounds like they're going to be president the whole time. But no, it's only for a month. So each 15 members of the council are rotating every month. And the last time Russia had the presidency, it was February 2022. And we know what, what happened then. It launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. And it means the Security Council is being led by a country whose president is subject to an international arrest warrant for alleged war crimes. The ICC, or the International Criminal Court, which is not a UN institution, issued the warrant for Putin last month. Month. And despite Ukraine's complaints, the U.S. said it could not block Russia, a permanent council member, from assuming the presidency. The other permanent members of the council are the U.K., U.S., France, and China. So, um, yeah, that might come out, but it's not um, uh, just it's it's kind of what's going on. That's just like I said, it's kind of what's going on over there when it comes to the Ukraine and Russia. So I hope it's something that we'll really, really be able to understand better. Uh, and just knowing the geopolitics that are involved with it too. But let's just hope that nothing nothing becomes worse of the situation, okay? Uh, then we have, uh, let's go into the U.S. as uh, there is tornadoes that are tearing through the U.S. Midwest and South. So uh, the death toll is now top 20 people who have died from these tornadoes. Survivors recount flying debris, destroyed buildings after storms that spawned several tornadoes, hit at least eight states in the U.S. Um, so far, 21 people have been killed and dozens more injured after storms and tornadoes tore through towns and cities across southern and midwestern parts of the U.S. Several tornadoes touched down on Friday night across at least eight states, laying waste to homes, businesses, and basically like splintered trees, uh, as this uh, sprawling storm system brought wildfires to the southern plains states and blizzards, uh, blizzard conditions to the upper Midwest, tens of thousands lost power as the storms smothered a swath of the country home to around 85 million people. The dead included seven in the state of Tennessee, five in Arkansas, four in Illinois, and other deaths were reported in the states of Indiana, Alabama, and Mississippi. Uh, in Arkansas, the governor uh, declared a state of emergency and, and activated 100 members of the National Guard to help local authorities respond. Uh, four of the deaths in Arkansas reported in the town, just as one town of Wynn, a community of only 8,000 people. And um, 
basically like even the high school's roofs were shredded, windows blown out, huge trees lay on the ground, stumps reduced to nubs, and broken walls, windows, roofs pocked uh, homes and businesses. So uh, prayers go out to uh, those people who have been affected by the tornadoes over there uh, in the southern and Midwest parts. Uh, last but not least, we'll go to Israel as thousands protest uh, despite judicial overhaul pause. So demonstrators take the streets days after Israeli PM Netanyahu's decision to freeze the controversial proposal. Thousands of Israelis have protested in Tel Aviv for the 13th straight week against a controversial judicial overhaul that has now been suspended by the government while talks are held with party representatives. Uh, Carrying Israeli flags on Saturday, people marched through the center of Israel's commercial hub chanting democracy and carrying placards uh, condemning the hard right government of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And representatives of most of parliament's parties had begun talks at the residence of President Isaac Herzog to try to formulate legislation that would be acceptable to both sides of the political spectrum. And, you know, Netanyahu right now is under tremendous pressure from his far-right allies to press on with the judicial reforms, you know, despite all these protests. And critics have viewed the government's drive as a threat to the court's independence and an attempt at a legal coup. So proponents have said it is seeking a less elitist interventionist bench. Uh, Netanyahu on, is also on trial for corruption charges. He has denied, said reforms are needed to balance the branches of government. His Likud party and political allies in the far right have been calling on their political base to stage counter demonstrations. All right. <clears throat> so there it is, guys. That is top three news around the world over the weekend. Hope it's something that uh, helps you guys out with your prayers. Uh, let's move into uh, some sporting news as um, big weekend in soccer. Uh, and Arsenal and Man City both played games, and they both won 4-1. Uh, Manchester City defeating Liverpool 4-1, Arsenal defeating Leeds. Uh, but Arsenal is still eight points clear of Man City, so they do have a hefty lead above them, which means you know, Arsenal would have to lose three games, and Manchester City would have to win three games to kind of take overtake that lead too. Um, Aston Villa. Uh, Aston Villa also defeats Chelsea 2-0, which drops Chelsea to the bottom half of the league, which is quite uh, surprising. In boxing news, Anthony, Anthony Joshua tops Jermaine Franklin by unanimous decision. It's the former heavyweight unified champion, Anthony Joshua, claimed his first win in over two years with a unanimous decision victory over American Jermaine Franklin at the O2 Arena in London on Saturday. Uh, judges, it was unanimous. You know, he won all three scorecards of the judges. So now it remains to be seen what is going to be his next matchup. Uh, last but not least, we'll go to March Madness. Uh, over the weekend, uh, the finals is finally set uh, for the national championship. It was UConn defeating Miami 66-54. And big surprise, it is San Diego State University defeating Florida Atlantic on a last-second shot to win the game. Uh, and uh, so it's going to be UConn versus SDSU. UConn is actually the only real blue blood uh, left in uh, this tournament. And they haven't been here since 2014, but let's see what happens there. Okay, so there it is, guys. Top three news in sports and also top three news around the world. Hope it's something that uh, kind of gives you a break from what's happening inside of our history. But um, you know what that means. It is the golden time. Yes, it is the golden time, a time of praise and worship to the Holy Trinity. Hope all of you guys are looking forward to giving glory to God and the Holy Spirit. So, what are we going to praise and worship today? We're going to start off with the starting point of the will, and then hero, and we'll break things down with sale of life. So, as one body of the Morning Star Drive, let's spend this time giving praise, honor, and glory to the Holy Trinity.
We are saying, friends, what are things? Those are not even problems for us. Satan is not a problem. We can knock him out for sure. We are growing every day. We are becoming the Lord's army. Only the Lord. How can we say it's hard and it will work out? With the Lord, we'll move ahead and always go forward. This was full of signs, but no destination. This chaotic world just confuses me. There was what we made. They will melt like stone. And then the truth will be revealed at last. I can hear a voice that's calling from somewhere.
the sky with the wings of our Lord. Let's go speeding away with the So
that was an oldie but a goodie. That is the sale of life before that hero and, of course, starting point of the will. All right. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that time of praise and worship and it just prepare your, prepares your hearts for uh, the word study for today. And, of course, every single Monday we do uh, the Sunday message word study. Uh, this week's message, I, Jehovah will accompany you and help you wherever you go. And that comes from Joshua chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. <clears throat> now, I think um, very, very important message, uh, especially with a lot of the chaos and confusion and people wondering, you know, why, why, why is God allowing this to happen? Why is this happening like this? And it gives one of these important lessons that we always have to remember. Um, there were three parts to this uh, to this message that I heard, and I thought it was... Um, it was the perfect message for what is happening right now. And uh, the story of Joshua, I think that is the battle that we face. It's almost It almost feels like, you know, over the past, you know, just even decades, it's just one battle after another. And it just seems to be getting worse and worse at certain times, right? Like sometimes we don't really feel it. But it just seems to be getting worse and worse. Like even during the 10 years when Sunstein was put away, yeah, it was hard in the first couple of years. But after that, it was it was quite uh, calming and there wasn't any, anything going on for like the next seven, eight years. You know what I mean? So uh, when you when you look at Joshua's life, uh, how he what was the main part of his life, it was all war. 31 battles just going one by one starting you know with the walls of Jericho which seemed impossible and then step by step he's facing uh, bigger and bigger tribes uh, it's just countless difficulties but the one thing that Joshua knew that before all this started God already gave him the answer he says you know what I'm going to be with you I will be with you and I am going to help you Right. And that's that's one of the things that I, I also believe that sometimes we forget. We forget that, you know, even before all the chaos, even before all the difficulties, tribulations come, we've always heard that same message is God will be with us. He's going to make sure that everything's going to be taken care of. He's going to make sure that in that um, we're, we're always going to be helped in our in in any situation that we come to. And when we read the entire Bible, it's always the people that God loves. It's always the people that love God and know Him that you'll never see God leave them and God is always helping them, right? Whether it's in suffering, tribulation, in the midst of death, God is like, I'm not going to leave you alone. You're never alone. And a lot of times we'll see impossible tasks being, being done by God. They were impossible. But God's like, no, 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 I'll get it done. Like, just look at the story of Moses. Right? Look at the story of Job. Look at the story of Joseph. Like, just looking at those three stories, even David, right? He was, David was pursued by the king. David had to kill Goliath. David had to fight against, you know, not only against his own country that was chasing him, but also other countries at the same time. So <clears throat> when, you, when you look at how God was helping all the people that loved him, he helped them in some of these, some of these things were just impossible tasks. And, you know, that's one thing that that first message I really liked was you got to have that solid faith. Like don't, don't have solid faith. That's only solid when things are good that, Oh, God's with me. God's blessed me. Look at all the great things that I have right now. All the things God has done for me. Right? No, that solid faith means regardless of the situation and circumstance, you are always petitioning for help. You always know God is with you. You always know God is helping you. Like that's what real solid faith is. It's almost like it's the same thing as love. We know who loves us the most in the most difficult times, not in the easy times, right? God is always with those who he sent and those who believe and love the one that he sent too, right? So, you know, I think that first point is there is you need to have that absolute faith. God is with me. God has taken care of me. He has never not let me down in the past and he's not going to let me down now or in the future. And that was that very, very first, that, that was a very poignant point that I think that everyone should keep in their hearts that having that solid, absolute faith. Um, the, the second part I thought for me was uh, a very powerful point. And it was, yeah, God is with us, 
God is helping us. God needs to fulfill His will, right? So, you know, God is helping us absolutely until the purpose is fulfilled, whether you're an individual level, at a church, the person of God, right? Whoever it is. But during the time where the will is being fulfilled, we're all going to face suffering and tribulations. And all the examples that, that are given throughout the Bible, like you just take a look at whenever God's will is fulfilled, how easy was it? And the answer is, <coughs> in every case, it was never easy. Israel suffering in Egypt for 400 years. Israel suffering in the wilderness for 40 years. And even after they came out of Egypt, they suffered another 40 years in the desert. Even after the 40 years in the desert, they had to fight battles, 31 tribes of, of Canaan. And it wasn't just them. Even their descendants went through suffering, whether it was the Old Testament, New Testament, or look at us now. But ultimately, the will was fulfilled and everyone gained what they should have gained. However, it was never easy. There was always suffering. There was always tribulation. And I think one of the things that we have to take out of our minds is, because, you know, this is one of the things that we do when we go through difficulty. It's uh, if we go through suffering and tribulation, then God is not helping us or God is not with us. And that's untrue. Right? That's untrue. If you think about it that way, because then what? Are you saying that God was never with Jesus because Jesus went through the most unspeakable pain and suffering? Or was God with Jesus even more during that time? And I think that's one of the things that we have to kind of take out of our minds is just because we're going through hardships and just because we're going through suffering, does that mean God doesn't care or God's not with us at that time? Like, it, like the best example is Jesus and the people and the disciples with Jesus. If, if God, you know, then uh, can you imagine what they would say? Like, well, Peter's like, I was crucified upside down. So was God really with me? But Jesus will be the ultimate example. The Savior of all mankind, the King of kings and Lord of lords, faced the most difficult hardships, the most suffering, every single day without exception. And yet, by the end of it, the will was fulfilled and salvation was brought to all mankind. And I think that's something that we have to understand is it doesn't matter what time period you're in. And I would even dare to say the closer you are to God, the more suffering you're going to face. Because there's like, there's like a, a purpose that's so much bigger than all these things. When I look at the story of Elijah and the raven's food, think about three and a half years of no rain. Right? He had to run away from the king and, and Jezebel that was trying to kill him. Where, he, you know, he's not doing anything. He didn't do anything wrong. He's just doing what God tells him to do. And then God tells him to do something and then now he has to suffer. Why? <coughs> it's for the will. It's for the will to save mankind. If we suffer and we go through hardships, but it's, you know, we gain eternal life in the end, it's worth it. If we suffer and sacrifice so much of our life here, but it allows our family to be saved and go and gain eternal life. If it, if it allows our friends, if it allows our daughters, our sons, our nephews and nieces all to be saved, is it worth it? And the answer is absolutely. There's never been a time, even when the Holy Trinity has been with us, that there was zero suffering and zero tribulation and hardships. And even if you look at it as just in life in general, let's just, let's just take out the Holy Trinity, all right? Let's just take out the Holy Trinity. You take out the Holy Trinity, and let's just say someone trying to be successful in the world, an individual trying to fulfill their purpose of becoming rich or whatever it is, how many of them have gone without suffering? How many of them have gone without hardships? That's a big question. How many have? And you listen to every success story in the world right now and you listen to the hardships they went through when they almost had zero. They were going bankrupt. I always talk about Elon Musk. He was about to go bankrupt. He was uh, borrowing money from his parents just to pay rent because he's trying to get this SpaceX, SpaceX off the ground. He only had enough money for three launches. And two of, them, two of them didn't work, so he had one last launch left, and it worked. And then he got a $1.5 billion contract with NASA. 
but he was actually living in his parents' house and he couldn't even pay his rent. And then you look at him now as the richest man in the world, at least I think top three richest men in the world. But when you look at that, you're like, oh my gosh, that's so different, right? They all went through it. If there's anything worth something, it requires sacrifice, it requires hardships, it requires suffering. And if it's something as big as the history of God, then it requires the greatest amount. And if I were to say that anyone who's received the most persecution and people coming against him, it's been Sunstein. And this is why we have to be those that really believe that God is with us. And it's not about how much suffering and hardship. That's part of, that's part of the process. And we're going to be helped wherever we go. And we need to have that absolute faith that God is with us, right? And the suffering and, and, and the pain and suffering and whatever it is, that's not, that's not a reason not to. Uh, the key part of the message, the key point of the message is now we know that the Holy Trinity is with us, that Jesus is with us, the man of mission is with us, and we're going to go through suffering and difficulty. So the last thing, the most key point for us as believers of this history is what do we do next with that knowledge that the Holy Trinity is working together with us and they are helping us. And we're going to go through suffering and difficulty. What should we do? Well, it's kind of connected to last week's message of what does it mean to be a righteous person, right? And it's like, here's like the best example which we see is Jesus, right? And Jesus gave the word. Not only did he just give the word, he helped people. He prayed for the sick. He prayed for the poor. He gave food to the poor, right? He set an example. And even though he was living that life, yeah, of course his disciples went through great, great suffering. Look at look what happened to the early Christian church. I talked about last week, the 10 massive persecutions after Jesus resurrected. But they held it together. They held it together because they centered on the word. There will come a time where the person preaching the word will no longer be here. The man in mission will no longer preach those words. And the words is everything that we'll have. It's all. That's going to be the key thing. Are we going to center on that word or not? Because that will be the living manifest. That will be the actual physical manifestation of that person who's no longer here in this earth. It's about belief in the Holy Trinity. It's about belief in Jesus who's come back in spirit. It's about believing in the one that that sent the body of the Lord. But they're all appearing through the word. It's all through the word. And when you see what happened over the last 2,000 years, what happened with the history of the gospel? Through that word, it's like when Jesus said, you know, heaven and earth will pass, but my words will never pass. In Matthew chapter 24 is like what, verse 35 or 32 or 33, I don't know, 35 maybe. Right? Heaven and earth will pass, but my words will never pass. And we see that over the last 2,000 years, the history of the gospel went for 2,000 years to billions and billions of people. If it's God's word, it will be fulfilled. The will will be fulfilled. It doesn't matter how much suffering, it doesn't matter how much hardship, it's going to be fulfilled. And this is why for us, we have to be those that believe in those words and take action on the words of God. Because the words contain the will. And in that, if we can fulfill that will, that's the ultimate thing that God wants. We have to, be, don't just believe in God. Don't just believe in the Lord, but believe in the words that are preached. God, look at them as the same thing. They're one. The Word of God and the Lord are one. The Word of God, the man of mission are one. Believe. Believe in God. Believe in the Lord. Believe in the Word and put them into action. And we have to be those that understand this correctly, clearly. The Holy Trinity and Jesus are with you and they are helping you. And we need to fulfill the will of God. And when we do this, then our issues are going to be resolved too. Even if God and Jesus are helping us, we st we're still going to face hardships. We're still going to face suffering. But we have to believe we have to believe in the Word. 
We have to believe in Jesus. We have to believe in God. We have to stand firm in the word. We have to overcome all these difficulties that are happening. There will not be a hardship or tribulation that will be too big to topple God's history. There will never be anything that big. Maybe it'll be, it could be too big for individuals, but it will never topple God's history. We have to be those that are absolute. And we can't make the chaos worse by misunderstanding or have any prejudices or anything. We have to overcome together. How? Harmony, love, peace, encourage each other, comfort each other during these times. God is with us. That is, you do not doubt. Be absolute in this. So let's take action on the word as God is with us and helps us to fulfill the will. Great message. Powerful message this week. And I hope that uh, a lot of you guys received a lot from it too, just as I have. And if you have any comments, go ahead and leave some comments below on the word study or anything that you would like to add to the word study too. Okay? So there it is, guys. That is the word study for today. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, and I, you know, I really, really want to be able to help those out, especially some people who, who can't even connect to the word. But uh, I hope that's something that all of you guys can benefit from. All right. So let's get to today's song of choice. And uh, it's a Monday, Monday morning. So I chose this amazing song I just found from SEU Worship, and it's called Monday Morning Faith. <laughs> Not scared of us 
That was SEU Worship with Monday Morning Faith. And yes, uh, I really enjoyed that song. There, that's the acoustic version. There's another version that's more of a live, not live, but, uh, you know, like the worship version of it. But uh, I really felt that that was something comforting and something that uh, we can all enjoy on this Monday morning, too. All right. So there it is, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that song of choice for today, which leads us into the last section. And of course, every single Monday we have 2G Talks with Eddie Kwan. And today, uh, Eddie will be talking about... Um, wanting to help the SS at this time with whatever situation they're going through. And uh, he's also going to ask a lot, of, a lot of you guys out there to share your situations, both SS and their own, so that we can best know how to help them. So I hope uh, you guys will enjoy this. Uh, please welcome Eddie Kwan, who's currently in Hawaii with 2G Talks. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of 2G Talks. I'm so happy to be here and to speak to you once again and to also hear back from each person about, you know, anything that they could uh, say to me, too. Uh, and so on that note, I was really thinking about what to share today. And I guess what's been most prevalent on my mind <laughs> right now is these last few weeks have been uh, extremely busy uh, for me. I have some I have an examination coming up in a few weeks that I've been uh, trying my best to study for, uh, even though I'm trying my my best you know it feels like it's, it's not enough so uh, that's been one big concern on my mind uh, and you know over the last five years I had the chance to take this test maybe a couple times but I it, like, it was never an ideal moment uh, but I'm at the point where I'm like okay it, I don't even know if there will ever be an ideal moment right there's no time where I can drop my other responsibilities and just prioritize this test so uh, let's just do it within the uh, the opportunity that we're provided with. Uh, so I'm, I'm working on that, and so that's just an update for you all too. But there was something that happened this week that made me realize that, yes, that's true, and I, I definitely want to give this test my best shot, uh, but there's still things that I need to do, even more than the things that I, I, I am currently doing too. Uh, and I think it, it really has to do with uh, everything currently going on in Providence as well. Like, for... A long time, and I think I've addressed this on this channel too, my, my stance on everything was like, okay, I'm 
like you know, it's what something you said to us at the very beginning, uh, before everything started transpiring, where like now is really a time to check ourselves, right, and to uh, focus on developing ourselves, and that we're mature now, we know what to do, and I think that that still hasn't changed, and my my thoughts on that definitely haven't changed as well, but I think. Given everything going on and just with the passage of time, I'm seeing like okay, my response to certain things have to mature somewhat. So that that's still true, and I think the other thing that's still true is I didn't want to uh, aid in any confusion or or uh, generate any wrong answers during this time, especially because things are so subject to change in each and every moment. So that's still true too, but. During this week, we had this opportunity where we had to uh, address the SS to some degree, and that's been something that I think is still important, and I think everyone can agree to, right? And so, uh, before doing that, we wanted to see exactly where the SS are, right, or where our youth are, where our second gen might be, and you know, even with everyone listening to this channel too, where everyone is, right? Uh, because to some people, talking about everything going on doesn't really help them, especially if we're handling uh, rumors and the like too. If it, it's if it's not something that's been affecting them, and they're not even anywhere, um, if they haven't been affected by it, that can be the thing that affects them, right? So that was one concern that we were balancing. But at the same time, sitting by and doing nothing also seems like it doesn't have the greatest uh, of effects too. And so we did want to actively check uh, what what's going on with each of our SS. And that's not to, to specifically say, uh, how, you know, like whether they've watched a Netflix docu-series or anything like that, but just in general, how are they doing, right? Um, and so that's an important thing because for some people, Currently, and I think this might speak true to even some people at home too. Uh, the, the biggest problems in our lives isn't exactly you know uh, anything going on in on Netflix or in the media or anything like that. But it might be even personal uh, things, right? That we're going through personal situations. Even I shared in the beginning about the examination that I have to take, and not just that, but each person have their own have their own situations, right? So, so some people they're going through something on an individual level that you know they might need help or assistance or they. Might just want to talk about right and for other people this you know the the netflix thing and other things are a pressing issue for them that they need to re, uh, have resolved too so each person has this different thing and i really felt like okay now is no longer the time to just sit by and to wait to see you know where everyone is right and to let problems fester if there are problems in that kind of way and so you know for today's 2g talks i wanted to even ask everyone online because my responsibilities currently you know extend just to where i'm at and to uh you know america and and ap but i think the msc 117.8 has provided a platform that everyone here has already experienced that extends just beyond our national uh, boundaries beyond just our regions and spans the entirety of the world and so this gives us an opportunity to discuss things like the things that we just mentioned like whether it's personal problems whether it's uh you know the things with the docuseries which past this guy has been you know providing us with so much great material uh, to help us understand i've had personal people like come up he even here to tell me that uh, that watching the the explanations that he's provided has helped them at least in a couple ways You know whether it's uh, some of them had their family members bring up, you know, the docuseries to them uh, And they were prepared and they weren't caught off guard when their family members did that and they were able to say Oh like oh none of the things in it are true and things of that sort of nature so I can really see that in many op in many ways that that has provided the the right thing. So for myself too, in the ways that I can help the SS, in the ways that I can help the youth, in the ways that I can help the families, because that's one thing that we we're discussing too. Because for like parents and for uh, people at home who are dealing with kids who are or dealing with a family, or for even for career members or for anyone right who are dealing with things with their family right now, whether it has to do with the docu series or whether it has to do with illnesses or diseases uh, and and other sort of uh, conflict within the family or situations within the family uh, and you know you're stressed out about these kind of things we want to see how best we can provide answers for those things and on honestly the biggest thing is the answers don't c just come from um, hitting the th the problem you know on the head with the hammer at times right uh, but there was something that uh, really spoke out to me in the Wednesday message 
right? It was actually two things, right? Because this whole week's message, uh, this previous week, was about how we really want to live a life of faith, right? And a life centered on the Spirit. And so we want to provide those answers. And those answers are the answers to the specific problems that even we just mentioned, right? Sometimes we seek a direct answer in terms of like a, a causal answer, right? We want to know what the cause of something is and the, the why and the how. But oftentimes the answer to our problems is to take action, right? And to take action, we need to know spiritually what it is that we should do. Right? So on Wednesday when I was listening to the preacher, they said something really cool. Um, in order to live a spiritual life, the first thing that we have to do is to talk to our spirit and soul a lot. And then after doing that, to converse with the Trinity. I think that was kind of like shocking and it was kind of a, a, a wake-up call for me too because in our present realities, for my present reality, like coming with this examination and uh, dealing with that, I think I've like really sunk into the physical part so much. Even though I'm praying still and I'm setting condition and, and doing all of these things, I can't help but fixate on like the, the realities of, this, of, of, of my studies and of this test. And it's so easy to get bogged down by those things so the idea of talking to my soul and spirit to see what it is that's on their mind that that the con that their concerns right that really spoke out to me and then of course talking to the trinity uh you know after having a conversion my spirit spirit and my soul and like you know they said like pray and talk to your spirit and your soul so that they can do the things that they need to do that was really something very impactful for me and i think the second thing that was mentioned in the message that was really moving was that the standard of whether we're living in a spiritual way and whether we're living in a correct way is the word, right? And so I, I recognize that lately because at first I was trying to distance myself from any sort of uh, news or rumors coming my way, like I only really spoke to people about like things not at all related to that. But I was also making sure I just don't go into any conversations that really that where, where, where I was hearing a lot of uh, news or rumors or anything like that. And, you know, that's, that's still fine. But uh, I, st I do, I have seen just as we are making the attempt all across Providence, right? And especially in Korea too, we've been getting a lot more word coming from the different churches, right? Where in the past, we heavily kind of focused on maybe like the Whitestone Church and stuff for a lot of the messages. Now I see that so many preachers who have never seen before are taking to the pulpit and they're delivering the messages. And that's a really good thing. And it's not to say that everyone is polished from the beginning, but people are really seeing that this is what is very important now, right? And people are praying. And you know, and in Korea, like some of the messages we watch it's so interesting right because like at the end they'll pray and they'll pray in a way that we haven't done in a very long time we're like where they call out to the lord like uh, three times before entering into prayer uh and for for me that's something i haven't done you know in any of the churches i've been to in, in quite some time and so i see that there's a need to do this there's a need to to deliver the word to have the word be the focus of our conversations with members especially with the youth so if there's a particular situation that you're going through or like the the circumstances around your life or the conditions around your life uh you know especially if you have young people within your life right within providence uh, lives that you're managing or or your own children uh, uh, then I, I do want to be able to help, right? Both through the 2G talks and through, you know, dealing with the SS directly uh, and even from praying for them too, right? We, we sent out an announcement here in AP saying like, we really want to hear from the parents about, you know, the things that their kids might be going through in their situations because otherwise we're operating in the blind, right? And so that becomes, it's our responsibility to check actually, to see where everyone is. And so this is uh, another way that I want to do that today. So if there's anything that's been going on, right, whether if you feel if you feel like it's something fine to write in the comments so that you can let other people know, too, then feel free to do so. If not, you know, privately message me, too, uh, you know, in whatever <laughs> means you have. I, I still use line and other things, too. Uh, but feel free to let me know because I do care about the SS and I want to make sure that I do more than just my physical responsibility uh, and I can do the things of the soul and the spirit at this time, too. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for continue to support each other i feel so much love from each person uh you know especially in all the in all the comments right even if it has nothing to do with anything that i said just to see that engagement with 
both with the things past the sky is sharing and the things that the other uh, guest speakers are sharing and the things that other people are saying in the comments too. And so I really hope that this platform can continue to grow, not just in a physical way with like subscribers and all of these things, but even in a spiritual way through the things that we do on our own and together as well. So with that, I'll catch you guys on another week's episode of 2G Talks. And thank you so much, Eddie, for another wonderful episode of 2G Talks. And uh, I forgot to mention that uh, Eddie does apologize for the echoey background. I think he was recording inside his church and not in his studio. So uh, that's a, a big forgiveness to you because we want to live in peace and harmony. Uh, uh, Eddie, thank you so much for another wonderful episode. And it's something that I think a lot of us are thinking about. A lot of us are parents, too, wondering how to take care of the SS during this um, this difficult time also. And I hope that uh, if you guys have any comments you want to uh, talk about uh, yourself or SS and how we can help, I think that would be greatly appreciated not only by Eddie, but everyone uh, who's taking care of the SS in their church. All right. So there it is, guys. That is the end of today's Monday podcast. Everyone have an amazing and awesome Monday. And we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride, and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop.